Friday Night Fights. Thank you, Doug. That big announcement's coming up shortly. We're not going to make you wait too much longer. Welcome into Friday Night Fights, brought to you by Corona Extra, one of the most beautiful scenes in the entire country. You like that mountain, don't you, Teddy? Mount Rainier? Yeah, it's been around 500,000 years. Anything that's been around that long, I like. That's longer than I you. I mean, it's been built well. I mean, yeah, a little longer than me. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Why are you squeezing my arm so hard? <laughs> Here we go. It's our main event. Thomas Williams Jr. and Gabriel Campillo Williams Jr. Undefeated and looking tonight to jump up in the official rankings. And here are said rankings. The champion, Bernard Hopkins, who you just heard, will be fighting Sergey Kovalev if Kovalev wins tomorrow against Blake Caporello. There's Williams Jr., number six, and Gabriel Campillo, a former champion, ranked number 10. The winner of this jumps right into the number two spot. Here is Gabriel Campillo, 35 years old. He spot a who's who in the light heavyweight division. He's managed by former middleweight titleist Sergio Martinez. Campillo's nickname, Chico Guapo, which means handsome man in Spanish. Look at those names. Andres Fafara, Sergey Kovalev, Tavoris Cloud, Kyra Murat, all of them you've heard of. And Campillo, not the best record in his last 13 fights, 7, 5, and 1. But you can't discredit who he's been in the ring with. As for Thomas, top dog Williams, 12 knockouts, 17 and 0 record. He's ranked in the top 10 by the WBO, IBF, and WBC. And if he knocks you out, he doesn't wait long for you to do it. All 12 of his knockouts have been by the fourth round. Teddy Atlas likes this guy. Here's what he had to say last week right here on Friday Night Fights about Thomas Williams Jr. I'm a fan of Thomas Williams Jr. I really like him. I love the fact that we're following him in his career. This guy has talent. This guy also is TV friendly. You know, he boxes more, looks to counter, but for the most part, he's aggressive. But I'm interested to see how Williams goes about it with such an experienced guy. And I'll say it again. I'm a fan of Williams. Man, it actually surprised me. You know, I was sitting at home with my fiance and my daughter, and he said that. I said, wow, Teddy usually hates everybody. You know, a lot of people say that means a lot because Teddy trashes everybody. You know, if you come in there and you're a prospect and you haven't fought nobody, trash. He, he, I mean, he just wants to see these guys step up. I want to have a dramatic, dramatic finish in this fight. You know, so I can go up to Teddy and pat him on the back and say, man, those words that you said took my insight a thousand miles past uh, Seattle, past D.C., everywhere, above the earth, you know what I mean? Because he's just not known for saying things like that. Teddy, do you really hate everybody? No, some people, yes, but no. <laughs> no, no, I don't hate everybody, no. Your family but you like, right? I love them, and I love my friends, and um, I love the fans out there, most of them. But I, I like people to uh, own up and face the music and do what they have to be what they have to do be accountable and um do things in an earnest way and i think that the people with thomas williams are bringing them along the right way in an earnest way and i like character you know i like talent but i like you to be able to take that talent and and show it in the right way and show it with good fighters not just with trash as thomas said but I like you to conduct yourself outside the ring like a man, not just inside the ring. And Thomas Williams has always done that. And that was part of why I was saying the things I said about him, is I like the way that he conducts himself as a man, as a person, and obviously now as a fighter. Well, I know something that our fans watching at home absolutely love. They don't hate it. It's the fight plan. And this week, it comes in the shadows of beautiful Mount Rooney. Who's gonna get to the top of the mountain? And what path does he take to get there? That's what I wanna know. And that's what you're here to find out. So let's climb, baby. Capillo, Williams. Well, if you're gonna climb up, get to the top, you need strong legs, you need a fit stomach. Capillo, two fights ago, he got stopped with a body punch. And you wanna know why? He raises his hands too high 
to protect up top. Leaves downstairs wide open. So, well, if you're Williams, this is how poor. You throw a combination, bang, bang, up top. Come back, bang. Hook downstairs. Little water in the basement, baby. You do that, well, avalanche. Nice win. All right, now how does Capillo get to the top of the world? Well, Capillo, Williams. Kabil likes to move his head, always moving that head, but he needs to make it count. Move at the right time. When he sees the jab, bang, bang. Count it with that left hand. And then bang, 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 bang. Follow right up. That's your only chance, your only shot that you're not going to fall off the cliff or off the mount. You good? I'm good. All right. Mountain climbers. Those were some stiff shots you were throwing there. Are you okay? Little kid, bring him in. Yeah. Bring him in, baby. Make him earn it, baby. Well, well Gabriel this Campillo is certainly isn't a new this kid, 35 years come, old. Touch yeah. gloves. God bless. His camp has said this will be his last tango. If Campillo loses, ah. we think he'll probably retire. I asked Campillo, is that true? He said, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to focus on this fight. All the way back. We'll determine All the way my back. future after it's over. You ready? Listo. Prediction. Campillo gets knocked out in six or seven rounds. That's just a little prediction, but... What I can tell you about Campillo for me is, yeah, he's 35 years old, yeah, he's a former world champion, and he's in the twilight of his career, and yeah, there's desperation. He wins or he goes home, you know, and he looks at his career on film with his kids. But he's still a pretty good offensive fighter. That's where his strength is. He can still get things done offensively. My doubts about Campillo are his legs. They've looked a little worn to me at his defense. Sometimes you can find them a little bit too easily and again with the legs he doesn't always show me the elasticity the ability to recover to endure at 35 years of age so that's what i'm i'm looking to see if williams can exploit that you have two southpaws in there by the way as we did earlier in the night always interesting always different because usually a southpaw gets in the ring at least for the first couple rounds they have an edge not here. Neither one has an edge. Williams said for the first time in his career, he only sparred against Southpaws in training camp, gearing up for Campillo. There's a body shot we talked about, and you saw exactly why we highlighted that on the fight plan. The reason why we highlighted it is, well, Williams chucked a couple punches at Campillo to the head. His arms went up high, and there was an opening low. And Williams went down there with the right hook. Thomas Williams Jr. with his third consecutive fight here on Friday night. Fights. He was involved with Cornelius White January 24th, one of the rounds of the year. Both fighters went down to the canvas, but Williams got back up and finished it against White. And then April 24 stopped Enrique Ornelas in the third round. Cabello has been knocked out three times. Cabello has lost three of his last five, knocked out twice in that span and he only has two wins in his last six you know most of the fights for Campillo in Spain 20 and 0 in Spain 3 6 and 1 outside and 0 and 4 in the U.S. looking for his first ever win in the U.S. and he's looking for it late at the age of 35. You can see the difference in power right away Campillo landed a clean shot to Williams Temple Williams didn't move and then Williams hit Campillo right on the gloves, and Campillo stumbled away. Stumble, that's the key word. Look at the legs. And all those great fans at home, take a look at those legs. To me, again, when he gets hit a shot, they don't look solid. And I hate to use your poor mom's, you know, spaghetti <laughs> recipe, but sometimes they look a little soggy, the legs of Campillo. We'll Stop see whether belt, or not like Williams can take advantage of that. We're going to break. Teddy's big announcement coming up at the end of round two. What goes into it? You know, a lot of planning goes into these fight plans. We look at what we think you're going to wind up seeing or what we think that the fighter can do. And there it is, the body shot for Williams. You know, first upstairs makes Campillo cover. You see it again. He covers up really high. The elbows come up, and then Williams goes back downstairs with the right hook from the southpaw position. Put a little water in the basement, as we said, of Campillo. You mentioned, you mentioned for everyone to keep their eyes on Campillo's legs, his foundation. 
Campillo's manager is Sergio Martinez. That's the same complaint that people have had about him. His legs are gone. He doesn't have that base to throw from, and maybe he should retire. Yeah, I think that he's, look, at least retired from fighting elite fighters. And Martinez was in with an elite fighter in Cotto his last fight, and he paid a price for it. And Campillo's in what I, I think is an elite fighter. With Williams tonight, we'll see whether or not he pays a price for it. If those legs can't hold him. You know, at age 35, I just wonder if Campillo can any longer win at the level that he once did win at, you know, that A level. So I guess the real question tonight is, you know, becomes that what level is Williams at? You know, he definitely thinks, and his people think of himself as an A-level guy. I think of him as an A-level prospect and, you know, contender. Well, this gives us a better gauge or barometer of that right here. Nice uppercut landed there by Campillo, who told us he's been working with heavy weights, trying to get more power in his power shots. One of the big knocks against Campillo is that he just doesn't possess it. Only nine knockouts in his 30 professional fights. It's kind of late in the game to find your power now, the age of 35. And that's what Campillo's trying to do. You know what? It's not that strange. I'll tell you why. One of the greatest punches in the history of the sport, Archie Moore, he found his power a little later. He was around later. He turned pro. I mean, he, he was the guy who fought for the title very late. Work, work, guys. Uh, he got opportunities later. He was one of the great hold, hold. fighters of all time. But one of the reasons why he was a greater puncher later, which you wouldn't think so, is he had to sit down more. He didn't have the legs to move around as much, you know. And sometimes you can find your power a little later if you're not gone. I think Campillo, I wonder if his legs are still there. That's my concern. But sometimes you can find power later in your career simply because you adjust your style. You can't move as much, and you start sitting more and concentrating on power more than you did when you were a young rascal. You like said you. <laughs> you said some people can. Can Campillo, from what you've seen, find that power I here think, tonight? I think he's still. I think Campillo. I never think he. Was, I don't think he was ever a great puncher. So the answer is no. I don't think he ever was a great puncher. But I think the thing they could still do pretty well I is put punches belt, together. Gentlemen. Thomas Williams Jr. has great power. Two straight knockouts here in Friday Night Fights. Turn. And Campillo doing well so far to avoid that big shot from Williams. All right, we've been hyping it all night long, and here it is, our big blockbuster announcement. Teddy, the floor is yours. Oh. <laughs> wow, you... <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Uh, my daughter, Nicole Atlas, who I love very much, just like I love my son, my wife, everybody, uh, she has opened up an Instagram for me. She got upset. I didn't want to open it up, but she got upset. There's been a lot of people over the last few years. I don't know much about social media. I think most of you know that. And I love you. Said so uh, you would even care about that. But I stay away from it. I don't know how to turn a computer on. Uh, I'm the only guy in Bristol that gets DVDs sent to me and faxes. I have a very good fax machine. You don't have an email? It, it, no email. Works one wonderfully the uh, fax machine but Nicole has decided to open up an Instagram uh, over the years we found out that there's been people out there that have fraudulated uh, Facebook accounts for me under my name they're not mine this is the only social media that is really mine that uh, we answer to that we that we own and whatever you will call it in that social world that you live in um, my daughter will handle it and is fraudulated a real word yes i mean it is now yeah uh, and you know and they have fraudulated you know there's been people out there that look you ask me do i like everyone no i don't like everyone i hate some people right and i hate the people that fraudulate you know me on social media right. so my daughter said hey dad i'm gonna open up an instagram i handle it for you and at least we have something that's not fraudulated yes. and They'll be truth -elated. It'll be truth -elated, and um, hopefully people will enjoy it, and I know nothing about it. Well, so soon you'll be on Twitter, and if that ever happens, it will shut down. So, Nicole, thank you for doing that, even though about one hour after she decided to do it, I told her to shut it down. <laughs> people started actually uh, 
whatever they call that, you know, responding to it. And I said, no, no, response, no good. Response, no good. People sometimes say things, maybe I don't want to hear those things. There, maybe, there, there it is, at Teddy underscore Atlas. You're going to have to take some selfies with your non-smartphone, that flip phone you have, and post them on there, if that's even possible from that phone you have. I don't even know if I can do that. I mean... But, we, you know, on a serious note, I know you'll be posting pictures from your foundation and some of your charity work, so I'm looking forward to following you on Instagram. As for Williams Jr. and Campio, we're in the midst of round three of 12. The winner of this will move up to number two in the IBF rankings. The current champion is Bernard Hopkins. Is this Campio's last tango, as his manager said? One of his advisors mentioning that this is probably it for Campillo. If he can't get the job done, he only wants to fight elite fighters. And Williams Jr. may be the gateway either to go up or go down for the man known as Chico Guapo. And again, now you see a little change in Williams. You know, Williams getting tested. I did the opening the way I did it about, you know, David Carradine. Or Mr. Kung Fu, the master walking across the country, and, you know, he left the school, and... Was, oh, a big right hand connects from Williams, and that went through the rafters. And was Williams ready to take that same journey? You know, not walk across the country, but walk up the ladder in boxing, and he'd have to get through, well, a guy who used to be the master, Campillo, at 35 years of age, former world champion, and Williams struggling with a little bit. I mean, he's 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 thinking in there. He's, he's wondering how he has to go about it. The first few rounds, he was looking to walk down Campillo. Now he's moving a little bit more. Believe me, Williams is getting tested a little bit tonight so far. And Williams has got a busted nose. Life is hectic. You know, I said that Williams was struggling. He's working, trying to figure things out. You see what he did there? He faked like he was going to go low. Watch, he fakes a little now. And then he goes high, so he faked a little bit low. I don't know if that's the same shot the guys are giving me, to be honest with you, but what he did was he faked a little bit low, Williams did, and then he went high. That tells me that it kind of confirms to me what I'm watching, that not that he's struggling, but he's really thinking hard, Williams, maybe harder than he has for a while, to figure out this very experienced Campillo. A little slip there from Campillo. I asked Williams Jr. how he felt about possibly re retiring Campillo, and he said, listen, if he's going to retire, if he loses, then I'm going to be forced to retire him, because that is what will happen tonight. I will beat Campillo, and I will get my title shot. See, again, Williams, I'm, I'm going to use the word, even though I struggle to use it, I'm going to use it. The word struggling. I think Williams now is in flux a little bit. He's trying to figure out, again, he's making that step up, like I talked about in the opening. You know, seeing if he can be a master with a more experienced guy. A guy 35 years old that we're not sure what he's got left. You know, I, I wonder about what Campillo has left, but that's if someone's firing at him. Right now, Williams not firing at Campillo, and he's allowing Campillo to be the best he can be. In other words, he's not using up a guy that maybe does have damaged legs, maybe does have old legs, and he's allowing Campillo to do the one thing he needs to do. Be left alone a little bit and use his experience and make Williams and Spots doubt himself. One minute, I mean, look at it. One minute you got Williams sitting down attacking, then some other points you got to move it. So again, Williams not completely sure of how he has to deal with this guy in front of him. You can see a cut, I believe a cut over the right eye. Got a little eye. cut from a punch, little cut from a, a punch. Cut from a punch, the referee is telling us. So Campillo is bleeding, Williams Jr. bleeding out of his Campillo. nose. And it's little cut from making a Making Williams breathe out of his mouth. He's struggling to get any oxygen right now. That's why he slowed down perhaps, as Campillo now has become the stalker. And I've just we been told in my ear, you Williams. picked up nearly 1,000 new followers on Instagram since we made the announcement. Wow. Thank cut you, from a punch. followers. People out there in the social media. And Nicole, hope you're ready to deal with all that stuff. And now Williams appears to be cut either above or slightly below his right eye. So both Warriors cut so far in this contest. Williams said he's never been cut before, never been hurt, and all of a sudden he's got a busted nose and a bloody eye. And again, he's not sure how to deal with Camille. You know, early in the round he was flat-footed, he was attacking, now he's moving again. He's going into a little bit of a area of uncertainty.
penalty is real. And that's what happens sometimes when you step up with that experienced fighter. Williams is going to have to figure it out. Let's stay here and listen into the corner now of Thomas Williams Jr., who's facing a lot of adversity right now. I need you to keep hitting him to the body because he's going to keep absorbing them headshots. No, you got it. Mike got it. You're good. Just keep stepping to the body, man. Come on, take your time. Deep breath. Deep breath. Come on. Deep breath. Good. Everything. Everything back off that jab, okay? Fifth round. I need you. Fifth. I need you to go back to the body, okay? Take your time. He got it. Okay. Here's the punch that caused the bleeding right here from Campillo. You can see it to the right eye of Williams Jr. And I mentioned Williams has never been bloodied up before. How is he going to react to the taste in his own blood for the first time? Well, that's the question, you know, and that's what makes this fight intriguing right now. You know, how is Williams going to deal with all these things that he's dealing with right now with a 35-year-old former world champion that I thought maybe didn't have a lot left? And right now, Williams is wondering, maybe this guy's got a lot more left than I thought he had. And Williams now, some doubt in his mind, some doubt as far as how to deal with this level of fighter, again, a former world champion, a fellow Southpaw, and how to deal with a cut the first time in his career. So you're going to go on to that next level. You get tested. You never know when that test is coming. It looks like that test has arrived tonight for the 26-year-old Williams. The last time we saw Campillo on Friday Night Fights, it was our season finale last year at the U.S. Cellular Field for the Chicago White Sox. Campillo was beaten up from far for the majority of that fight, but then just kind of lost his stamina, lost his legs, and ended up having the fight stopped. That may be what we're seeing here as Campillo's starting to impose his will. Teddy, you've got it all tied up. Our viewer scorecard from Facebook has it three rounds to one for Williams Jr. Again, that fight you're talking about was from Farah. You know, against Campillo, and Fampara was firing all night. Oh, and a right hand, Williams Jr. with a counter punch after taking two. Yeah, but I don't like it. it, it it's just one fight, like a keep, keep, keep him off me punch. Like, uh, just keep him off me. It's not a consistent rally of punches. I don't like the body language of Williams right now. Do not like it at all. Take a step back. He's, you can see the eye is really bothering. Well, well now, I mean, now he's cut. You see the blood is flowing in the left eye there. He's complaining about it. He's squinting. You know, you asked me a question. Hey. How will it affect him? Well, you continue? never know until it happens. Thumbs touch. Listen to my command. Let's go. And we're finding Tell out him. right now. Williams not handling that cut real well right now. And Williams just jogging around the ring side to side. It's almost as if he's hoping the blood stops flowing and his eye heals. I've got news for you, Thomas. It's not going to heal itself. Campillo knows the target now is the left eye of Williams Jr. And a veteran like him, a former champion, knows how to exploit a weakness. Yeah, Tom, Tom on Williams, no relation, is the cut man for Thomas Williams. And he, well, he didn't do a great job the last round. We'll see if he does a better job the next round. But again, the man who really has to do the job is Williams. He's got to mentally handle it. And right now, you see, he's looking for desperation punches. He's backpedaling. He's squinting. He's being bothered by that cut, not only by the flow of blood, but just the situation, just that he's not in control. And he's worried. I used the word earlier. He's worried. Look, he's looking at his corner. He's look, he, he should be concentrating on the fight. We are seeing the unraveling of a prospect right now. We'll see when he gets back to his corner if they can put it together. This is a perfect spot. I don't, know, I, I don't know why they're dumping water over his eye. I mean, that removes the coagulant that you're putting in the eye. Now the coagulant's being put in. It looks like adrenaline is being put in by the cut man, continue. but before that... It's up to you, brother. You don't want to be dumping water on it. Hold on a second, it, Teddy. The, the doctor's it, speaking to the ref. So you're telling me to call the fight? I'm telling you that that is going to block his vision. It's dangerous, and I'm telling you to call the fight. Yes, sir. 
And that's it, it's over. Yeah, but let me tell you something, Matt. Really, the people at home are gonna be shocked when they hear me say this. And I gotta say, because I heard it in between the corner. The only reason the doctor came up there, usually you don't want the doctor when you're cut. The only reason he came up there was the stepfather of Williams, Robert Peterson, asked for him. Hey. What happened? Get yourself together. Get, just get yourself together and show that you can still be a champion. And you didn't let me down. You didn't let me down. But listen, you got to worry about yourself. You got to worry about your family. You got to worry about who you are. And now is the time to find out who you are. You know, now you didn't let me down, Tom. It's not as a person, but as an athlete, what you did tonight, what, what happened to you tonight, other great athletes, other great fighters, that's happened to them before. And what they do now, what they start doing tomorrow, that's what's going to tell. Don't let, don't let yourself down, all right? Yes, sir. Pull yourself back up. Yes, sir. Because that is the testing of a man. That's the testing of a champion. What you do after this, what you learn from this, what you do from this moment on. Yes, sir. Well, that shows the respect that he has for you, Teddy. He told us yesterday, after the fight's over, he wanted to come over and get a pat on the back for you. Instead, you gave him some advice going forward. Yeah, you know what happened? I was starting to say it before Thomas came over there. I didn't expect him to come over to me. In the corner, I was listening in the corner. The audience couldn't hear it while we were at commercial. And Peterson, Robert Peterson, the stepfather of Thomas Williams, asked the referee to have the doctor come and look at the eye. And when I heard that, I said, uh-oh, uh-oh. You know, either he's not ready mentally to continue, you know, he's not dealing with this, he doesn't want to continue, or maybe there's a more serious injury that we can't see and that he's worried about and he wants the doctor. But usually you don't see the fighter ask or the fighter's corner ask for the doctor. Usually you want to keep the doctor away. You know, you get the cut man to stop and you say, okay, let's go, let's go, baby. Let's behave like a fighter. Let's do, let's climb this hill. We got a hill in front of us. Let's go climb. I mean, we've been, boxing been around 200 years. Fighters overcome cuts. So usually when you, when I heard that, that put an antenna up. That, that, that set off a light in my head. I said, gee, I don't think he's handling this very well. Maybe, maybe it's bothering him more than I know, and they want the doctor, or maybe they're just not ready to deal with continuing in this fight. Any way it is, we don't know for sure. But again, I was surprised to hear the stepfather say, hey, I want the doctor to come. And again, that's why you saw the doctor. He didn't do it on his own. They asked for the doctor to come up. I just hope this young man can handle this and we'll see what he's made of going forward. They call it the Chamber of Truth. There was nowhere to run or hide for Williams Jr. He was looking to his corner for help. They couldn't provide it. And in the end, the doctor stops it. Let's send it up to Barry Egan for the official notes. The doctor's decision, referee Ray Corona stepped in to stop the bout at three minutes into round number five for the winner by TKO out of Madrid, Spain, Gabriel Chico Guapo Campillo. We're focused on Williams Jr. right now, Teddy, but let's talk about the performance yeah, tonight talk from about, Batman. Look, let's talk about how wrong I was. I said from the top, I go out on a limb. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, hey, I'm wrong. I said Campillo might get stopped in the sixth and seventh round opposite way. He goes and stops Williams. Uh, the old dog had a few uh, old tricks still left. Eight, 35 years old, former world champion, Customato, my great teacher, the great late, you know, boxing manager, trainer, used to say, never allow an old former world champion to get confidence when it looks like he's passed himself. Don't let him start finding himself because for that one night, that one moment, he might be able to turn the hands of time back and use that experience and Capillo used that experience against a young talented but untested Thomas Williams to steal a line from a country song Campillo's not as good as he once was but he was as good as he once was tonight coming up next we'll speak to Thomas Williams Jr. ringside now let's take a look at Tonight's foolproof punch of the night brought to you by Just For Men, Teddy. 
was the punch that cuts Thomas Williams, the young, at that moment, undefeated fighter, and put him in a situation he had never been put in before, where he saw his own blood. And it resulted in a big win for Gabriel Campillo. We'll wrap things up here from Washington when Friday Night Fights returns. A finish. Welcome back to the ESPN studios. I am Doug Kazarian, wrapping things up here from Bristol. Just want to remind you, one week from tonight, we'll be back for another edition of Friday Night Fights, August 8th, 9 p.m. Eastern, ESPN 2. Willie Nelson, who's won seven straight fights. He's actually gunning for his seventh straight win, facing Luis Grajeda. Again, one week from tonight, ESPN 2, 9 Eastern. Let's go back out to Washington with Todd and Teddy. Thank you, Doug. Teddy, what are your final thoughts from what we've seen here tonight as Gabriel Campillo, his last tango isn't quite yet. He's got more dancing to do. Well, in the immortal words of Forrest Gump in that great movie where he quoted his mother as saying, you know what? Life is sometimes like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And when we started this night tonight, well, we never knew what we were going to get. We didn't know we were going to get the 26-year-old Thomas 17-and-old Williams being put into the position that he had never been in his life where he was cut, where he was dealing with a very experienced former world champion, where that former world champion had more left, or at least was allowed to have more left than I thought, your Julie thought, had left, and he pulled off what was a big upset. We promise you Thomas Williams Jr. ringside. We will interview him and post that interview in about five minutes on ESPN.com. For the entire Friday Night Fights crew, I'm Todd Grisham. Thanks for watching. Weeks.